Immigration has obviously been a hot topic and maybe the temperature has been turned up just a little bit by the press conference that the governor had just moments ago at Freeman Coliseum, uh, making allegations that there were certain things that were happening inside the exposition hall. He said the Texas Rangers got what he called a credible uh, allegation of sexual assault happening, that there weren't enough supervisors, children weren't eating, and that some of the teen males there were not being separated when they came down with COVID-19. We are joined by immigration attorney Lance Kurt right now, uh, who has certainly been on the front lines of a lot of what's been happening immigration wise. I, I don't want to put you on the spot because I know you haven't been inside uh, the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall, but your initial reaction to the allegations that the governor's making tonight. Whenever you hear allegations of child abuse and uh, children being mistreated, it's obviously very distressing and very disturbing. Uh, with that said, I take whatever the governor says, the grain of salt. Uh, he is known to run to the media when he has something that is politically expedient, and certainly his position in immigration is one that he finds to be politically expedient. I think that they obviously need to investigate these, these issues. And I think they need to make sure that it's not happening. And if it is happening, they need to take immediate corrective procedures. And hopefully, and I'm sure that if the Texas Rangers did receive that complaint and it is credible, that will happen. You've been doing this for 20 years, you said. You said, again, you haven't been inside Freeman, but you have been in other facilities that have been housing uh, people who've crossed the border in the past. Give us some perspective about what that's usually like, the setup, what these children go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, it depends on the facility, but day-to-day -day basis, you know, they try to construct an atmosphere where the children can thrive. Um, obviously, that's limited in what they can do because their freedom is limited. They can't leave. They can't come and go. Um, but generally speaking, they have health care. They have uh, school facilities. Uh, what they're trying to do is get away from a situation where children are confined and move to a situation where they can place them with uh, family relations and foster care situations where they can actually continue to, uh, to you know, you know, be involved in the community like a normal child might be. You know, Lance, I, this has become such a politicized and polarized uh, issue when you talk about immigration. I mean, you've been doing it forever, but have you ever seen it like this when it, it, it's become so political, uh, you know, and, and really it was political when Donald Trump was president. It's political now, just maybe turned around the other way when Joe Biden's president. Yeah, it's, it's really polarizing. And as an attorney, when you talk to your clients, you want to give them definite answers. But unfortunately, because the political winds keep changing so dramatically, you frequently have to say, well, this president's saying that or this president's going to say this. And we have to wait to see how this pans out. So there's not always clear cut answers just because the policies are changing so much. Um, with that said, it's been really difficult over the past four years because the government's adopted a policy where they sort of walled themselves off from the people they're supposed to serve that being the immigration community. Um, they stopped talking to us about difficult cases. They stopped taking our phone calls. And it got to be so bad that if you wanted to talk to someone about a delayed case of the government, you had to file a lawsuit. So that was been going on for the past four years. Now President Biden's come into the office and he's trying to make USCIS more customer oriented, trying to make it more um, relatable to the people they're supposed to serve. But then you topple that on top of the COVID-19 pandemic. And what happened during the past year was a lot of council posts across the world were simply not processing visas whatsoever. So now that we're starting to, you know, start to reactivate our council, starting to have people process in the United States again, we're dealing with massive backlogs. So all the visas that were not being decided last year are top up on all the ones being filed this year. Um, and it's gonna be a real, mess to kind of clean all this stuff up and get everything back to working again. Yeah, and that's what I'm curious about. You as an immigration attorney mentioning that backlog and now with the news today, what's the reality of these kids, especially uh, given what we've seen today, being connected with an attorney, being able to immigrate to this country legally? Is, is that a reality for many of them? Well, that's a that we'll, we'll find out. Um, I will say this, the Biden administration um, a few months ago uh, announced that he wanted to have a comprehensive study into refugee policy, especially how it relates to gang violence in the countries where they're coming from, which is primarily Guatemala, 
Honduras and El Salvador. And he also wants to address the underlying reasons why these children are coming. They're leaving profound violence, poverty, and situations that are really not tenable for children to be in. So the goal is to try to solve that. And if you can do that, that'd be wonderful. In the meantime, getting these children in touch with attorneys, well, I understand that attorneys are in those facilities. Um, my understanding is that some pro bono groups are in there telling them about what their rights are and trying to connect them with other attorneys, which is what we've been doing as an immigration lawyer community really since these things started happening way back when Obama was president. You know, the easy thing a lot of people say is, why don't they just come to this country legally? Why don't they just come to this country like my grandfather did or my forefathers did? It's not that easy, is it? I mean, you this is something you do on a day in, day out basis. Well, that's right, especially when you're talking about the children. There's no pathway for them to come to the United States other than to come and ask for asylum, which they did at a port of entry. And then that that was actually legal. That's what they're supposed to do when, they, when they're supposed to ask for asylum status. Um, crossing the border illegally, of course, is, is not the lawful way. But a lot of these children didn't do that. They actually presented themselves and asked for asylum. So. So yeah, it's, it's very hard to come into the United States legally. We have a finite amount of visas that we offer to individuals, regardless if they're applying for asylum or not, just if you wanna to come to be with your family, there's a long backlog. If you wanna come and work for a US corporation, there's backlogs for that as well. And there's all types of hurdles they have to overcome to, to obtain those types of visas. So it's incredibly difficult. Um, and those that do receive it are looking at long backlogs typically and now with the past four years of where USCIS has kind of walled themselves off and the COVID-19 pandemic, they're looking at even longer lines. And with what seems like an investigation to come into Freeman Coliseum specifically, uh, let's wrap this up today by, by asking you what's next for these, these teen boys who are in that facility right now. What would the next steps for them be uh, when it comes to the possibility uh, of immigrating to this country? Well, the first question would be is whether they would qualify for something called a special immigrant juvenile visa. This is uh, allowed to some of the children who have had a parent who's neglected or abandoned or abused them. A lot of the children do qualify for that type of visa. If not, then they might have to make a case for asylum, which is much more difficult to win. Typically, um, they will be placed before uh, uh, an immigration court and the immigration judge will start hearing those cases. And those immigration courts have also suffered from some of the same uh, exterior circumstances, which I just explained to you, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has really stopped the courts from working. So those children will be thrown into a system which is already overwhelmed and will be facing backlogs again. So the Biden administration really has to start working on unraveling all of those things and, and actually going to have to do some reformation of how we process immigrants. This is a conversation I'd like to continue down the road, Lance Kurtwright with the law firm of DeMott, McChesney, Kurtwright, and Armandez. Uh, appreciate your time, Lance. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.